Hello, Lawrence Grayson back again for shortformvideo.com and in today's After Effects tutorial I was just going to show you a nice simple trick to turn ordinary text into a glassy looking effect um, but I kind of got a little bit carried away and ended up with something like this a kind of icy background, some glassy text and a freezing animation that I discovered completely by accident. So essentially you've got three tutorials for the price of one today. I'll be showing you how to create this um, ice layer. And glassy looking text. And a freeze effect on top. So that's enough chat, let's get cracking. As always, first thing to do is create yourself a new composition and we'll call this frozen text. I'm using the uh, 720p HDTV preset, which is 25 frames per second, and we're going with a duration of 10 seconds long, and just hit OK. All right, so the first thing I'm going to create is our IC background. So to do that, we right-click, create a new solid, pick a nice IC blue, and we'll call this IC background, and hit OK. Once your background color is in place, go to your effects and presets panel and find our old favorite, the four color gradient, and drag that onto the top. Now to get the default positions and colors closer to what you want, you can use the eyedropper and just click on the color of the background layer that you originally selected, and then just match the remaining three colors to that first color, and that way you can just play around in the same tonal area to give yourself some nice dark and highlight areas. And we'll just increase the blend just to soften them all off a bit and maybe change the position of some to make it look a little bit more interesting. Okay, so that's four color gradient done. Next step is to go back to your effects and presets panel and find another old favorite, the fractal noise effect. Drag that onto your background layer in the Effects and Presets panel, twill down the Animation Presets menu and select the first Cinders preset. And this will give us this nicely animated kind of crystalline white layer. Now, the first thing to note about this is that it's um, it's got a keyframe animation in it. So select your background layer and hit U to bring up the keyframes. And we can see that it's keyframed up to the five second mark. So beyond that, it actually becomes a static layer. So all I'm going to do is drag the keyframe from the five second point up to the end of the composition. And that will slow down the animation and stretch it across the entirety of our 10 second composition. OK, so go back to your Fractal Noise Effects control panel. And we'll just play around with this for a little bit. I'm going to take the contrast down to about 150. And then I'm going to select Soft Light from the Blending Mode. And that will just merge it into the um, background color layer that we've previously selected. Now obviously, you know, you can play around with this to your heart's content. You might want to bring the brightness up. If you're looking for a more scratched up icy surface. Or possibly even take it down if you only want a few scratches visible. And of course, if you wanted it to be just a static layer, just uh, hit U and delete the evolution keyframes entirely and that'll give you a solid icy looking surface that doesn't doesn't move and then you can just play around with the evolution to find a static image that you like but I like mine to be animated so I'm just going to undo that put the keyframes back in and move on so that's our icy background next thing to do is cr to create our icy looking text so go to your text tool and just type the text in to the composition. Now this will work with any typeface you like, but obviously glass tends to work best on rounded surfaces, so I've chosen the Arial Rounded um, MT font, which you should have installed by default on most Windows systems. Just need to tweak it a little bit because it's a touch on a large size, so I'll take it down to 220 pixels. Tap apostrophe to bring up the guidelines and just hold down shift and use the cursor keys to nudge it into the center position. Okay, I'm also going to change the color and use the eyedropper to pick one of the bright 
tones from the background color. So how do we make this look glassy? Well, it's with one of our old favorites, the uh, bevel and emboss tool. So right click on your text layer, go to layer styles and select bevel and emboss. And you'll get the default settings, which is the smooth um, highlight and shadow bevel and emboss, which looks a little bit like this. Now that's not what we're after. So let's just tweak it a little bit. Twill down the bevel and emboss settings. Leave the technique to smooth, but increase the size to about 15, just to really round it all off. And now we scroll down to the highlight and shadow modes. Now the highlight mode is pretty much how we want it to be. It's set to uh, screen and the highlight color is white. Now all we're going to do is repeat that for the shadow color. So essentially we've got highlights coming from both sides. So go to the shadow color and pick white and then go to the shadow mode and select screen. And instantly you get this glassy frosty looking text, which is a lot easier um, than using the conventional method, which is the CC glass preset. And that tends to distort the text. This way we actually keep the uh, dimensions of the text, which is pretty handy. I'm going to right click the text, go to blending mode and select soft light again. And that'll just let some of the uh, background color show through, as well as some of this frosty detail, which you can see around this area here. So again, right click on your text layer, go to Layer Styles, and select Outer Glow. Now the default settings for Outer Glow are a rather pale looking um, color. What we're going to do is use the eyedropper tool to pick one of the darker tones from the background. Change the blend mode from screen to color burn. And we'll increase the size to about 20 and drop the opacity right down. It's kind of like a drop shadow, but just all the way around the text. So that's probably good enough for a lot of projects, but there was one technique that, uh, like I said, I found completely by accident. And I'm going to create that one now. It actually started off as a, um, a further technique for this text, so I'll, I'll run through both of them. Um, what we're going to do is hit Control and D to duplicate the text layer. Twill down the properties and just delete the layer styles because we just want the basic text. Go to the character color and select white. Then go to the pen tool and just draw a quick rough mask with some nice curvy bits cutting directly across the middle of your text layer. And when you just close that uh, mask off, it gives us that horizon effect that uh, you often see on 3D text. Um, one thing you can do just to uh, soften it up a bit is go to the mask feather and just maybe feather it by about 10 pixels. And that just finishes off our um, icy looking text, gives it that really nice frosty look. Okay, so final step, the accidental step. I'm going to duplicate the Mr. Freeze highlight horizon layer. Go to the effects and presets panel and find the fast blur. Drag it onto the top text layer and increase the blurriness by about four. Then go back to your text layer, right click, go to blending mode and select luminescent pre-multiply. And it gives us this frosting effect. Um, it just seems to be a combination of the fast blur that makes this work. So if you see as I enable and disable it, it kind of breaks and then fixes it. Um, and just to finish it off, we're going to hit the T button to bring up the opacity and drop it right down to about 40%. So you can see the underlying text showing through. And that gives us a look as though it's uh, frozen in ice. And just to animate that, all we're going to do is go to the maybe the one second point on our timeline, go to the mask properties, create a keyframe at the mask expansion point, go to the eight second point, create another keyframe, and now we're just going to increase the expansion 
until it covers all the text, so that's 110 pixels in this case, at the end point. Then go back to the first keyframe and reduce the expansion until it's no longer visible. So that's minus 120 pixels. And now when I scrub through the timeline, you'll see we've got our frosty text, our icy layer, and what looks like an ice cube forming over the top of the text. I can't take credit for this because as I say, I was actually looking for a completely different effect and found this one totally by accident. But it's uh, that kind of thing that makes working with After Effects so much fun. Okay, one last thing and we'll call it quits on this one. Right click and create a new adjustment layer. In your effects and presets panel, find the curves effect. Drag that onto your adjustment layer. And we're just going to play around with the curves. Maybe give it a bit of an S curve to give it that really frosty look. And finally, type CC Snow into your effects and presets panel and drag that one onto the top as well. Now, if I just solo that, you can see the CC Snow effect is just a standard snowfall. Go to the Effect Controls panel, type 0 into Speed, 0 into Amplitude, and 0 into Frequency. Maybe play around with the flake size a little bit, make them a little bit larger, and increase the amount to about 600. And that'll give it this subtle, icy, spotty layer. I might just drop the opacity down because it's a little too spotty down to about 15%. Okay, so there you have it, you're ready to render. And this is how it should look. Now there's probably a ton of other stuff you could do with this, but um, I think I'm going to stop it for there. Um, as always, the project file for this can be found at my website at shortformvideo.com. So if you'd like to use this technique in your own projects, by all means, uh, follow the tute and uh, add your own spin to it, or just grab the file from my website and uh, use it wherever you like. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.